Welcome back to Tools and Track. In this episode, this thing becomes square and this man makes brackets. As we wrapped up in the last episode, I was having concerns about getting these guys triangulated and tied in. So the best way to triangulate something is, put the third edge on it. At the moment, there's only two on each side and I, I'm all over the place and I don't like it. So, first things first, we're going to cut out the remaining two spars to make these square. I'm going to actually go on that because I miss using my little binky 15 quid uh, bench grinder. It's deeply rewarding actually, you just stand and listen and watch as it's like a knife through butter. It's, it's splendid, fabulous. as long as it's a perfect knife to be cut, otherwise Aye. you're fucked. Aye, otherwise you're just measuring for three and a half hours then you end up with the wrong part anyway. And it still doesn't cut all the way through, but you know, apart from that, positive feedback eBay. In the meantime, here's mechanical loader making some brackets. Today we're doing maths. Tommy's tasked me with this monstrosity. Which is something to do with suspension pickup. I'm not really sure what to do. We've got a couple of points of reference. There's two, what I assume are big holes for mounting something important. So, what I've got is two dots here, There's, that's 44mm. Halfway in the middle, 22mm. This dot is where that's going to be. So, what I then did is went this direction. The little circle with a cross through it, I'm going to assume that means. Uh, there's also a radius of 20 millimetres. I don't fing know what I'm talking about. Tommy! So, why, you may ask. Did I shake a can of spray paint and then paint a seemingly irrelevant surface? There's a reason. When we tried this the first time, we were tired and it was just not going well and we couldn't figure it out. And Tommy explained the concept of lines. We're going to make intersections, not the sort that Americans drive on, but intersections where you can measure up various different points that give you a full picture of exactly what we're cutting, how we're cutting it, and it hopefully means we end up with the correct product, which is the brackets that are going to mount the suspension arms in various places. So. Why have we painted? Because we need to be able to see the lines inscribing them, makes them visible, but when there's like 10 of them, you know, they need to be clearly defined. So, paint is on, we're going to let it dry, and then we're going to scrape. Okay, so whilst mechanical hodor is going on with his uh, bracketry down there, uh, I'm going to see if we can address the problems we've had in the previous episode with this. Namely, getting it all welded in. Correct. However, if I put something here, it's going to remove my uh, pagan cross of doom. So I think what I might think about doing first is tack weld the front of this. I know the angle is going to be right for coming up and projecting off of it. I just don't want to weld anything on the top. So let's weld up the bottom and cut out some more steel. The plan to every problem is going to be, so let's just weld it and cut it. Sorry. We are going to measure out lines. That's what your intersections are. Then another thing, I've done something you make noise. As you were. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with inward measurement. 122mm NTN, which is 12.2 centimetres. Or, if you're you know, simple like I am, count to 12 and then two wee dots in the way. Probably would have been a lot easier doing this the other way around. Now that we've done the length measurement, the next thing we're going to do is draw that line all the way up and down on its 90 degree axis. And that's the first line in the intersect. Cutting through the primer nicely, leaving a really obvious line. It's, it's fascinating stuff this, drawing lines with a flathead screwdriver. So the next thing we're going to do... Are you belittling my f***ing craft? There's nothing because you've changed the page on the Bible. I was reading Benedictus 2317 and now you've moved me to... Whip the... And again, 90 degrees. And that's all. We now have our suspension pickup piece. So the next thing we need to do is figure out where the circles are going to be. So how are we going to do that? We're going to work out from the middle. So we need to get the smack bang centre point. Now we know that from one end of this to the other, is 122 mil. That means it'll be 61. I've cocked that measurement up. We'll do that again. Probably because of the stupid way in which I did it the first time. Okay, that looks good. And down here. Great, so 
So we're now, we've got a mill out, but we're, we're now good. More edit than I'll be required to make this look, you know, like I have a brain. So, where I was going there was halfway between the width, 61 mil, because the width is 122 mil, so we're going to get 61 mil. So this is the halfway point. Now the measurements on this actually tell you from the halfway point how far away. Uh, yes, 99 mil. Hey, yeah. At no point in my measurements did I get 99 mil. Well, oh, that's the distance for the centre of the two circles on the bottom here. No. I'm going to pause the proceedings and step outside for a minute. In the interest of not getting deafened. Ah! Go! Oh. I read the wrong measurements. Now that I think about the 99. The 99. So now what I need to do is get primer, paint it, give it 10 minutes and do it again. Do you know what the best part about all of this? What? You'll only have to do it another 20 times. Ken, I'm excited. This is great. Yep. Cool, so our centre line is done, the two fold lines is done. Um, what we need to do now is measure the halfway point north-south and then figure out where the screw holes are going to go, which are ultimately going to be where the bolts go through that hold the uh, upper and lower arms in. Okay, so what this looks like now basically is just well, a knots and crosses board. You, me, chitty chitty bang bang, chitty chitty bang bang. That is, this to actually start to feel like we're just building chitty chitty bang bang But it's not chitty chitty bang when it's chitty bang bang I haven't even given him a coffee yet, which I'll have to make a while oh. so The radius of these circles is 12.5mm, which will bring them out to this size Roughly, very rough obviously, I'm doing it purely for presentation But in the same on this side, that'll drill the holes with the step drill We then bend the entire thing using these bend lines Which brings the whole thing round to this U-shaped clamp that we're trying to make so, let's get on with making it. Coffee. We're going to have a coffee, but we're going to have a coffee in a mug that's aptly sized. And frankly, it's a design which is simply second to none. I'm actually having to measure out less coffee because we usually have a bucket rather than a cup. It actually looks tastier coming out of a Tools and Track mug. If you subscribe to Patreon for one month, you can have your own Tools and Track mug. Mmm. Besto. <laughs> So this is where we're at so far. We've got our suspension bracket panel cut out and ready to go. The next step is to drill the bolt mounting points where the bolt's going to pass through and to trim down the edges and then ultimately bend it so we're going to get on with that now. Eye protection to protect them retinas. Ear protection to protect them eardrums. Eardrums and eyes protected. Hand protection, because nothing stops a saw like a bit of soft fabric. Now, I'm taking a brief interlude once again to show mechanical order how we get radiuses on the end of this. For the radius on the end of this, we want it to be 20mm, which is a 40mm diameter. So we could get compasses out and verniers and all sorts. We could just measure a socket that is 40 mil and scrape around the back. It's a pint of science mixed in with a little bit of minge baggery. Over to you, big boy. Obviously, I'm going to be shitter at this than he is. What like do you need that? the handle for? Because I like it, it makes me feel secure. It's like when daddy holds me. Why have you always got this thing on though? So I don't lose it. It's almost like... It's almost like the fact that it sits here is by design, one might say. Okay, yes, I mean, you can see that there's excess metal around the... 
Bling. We like, we love Bling in this show. That was quite uncomfortable. This well, these are leather. Those are f***ing not. Pull me off. <laughs> I mean, it's really not brilliant. But... Right, once you've got it like this, uh, for the sake of your fingers, if you ever need to work in the car again, these edges are sharp. No, they're not. I get you. For the sake of any poor mechanic stuff that needs to work in the car after you, they will appreciate not having sharp edges. Now that we've got this cut out, it's time for me to use new tools. This is a vice brake. And what, darling, does a vice break do? It bends shit. When you pull them together, it'll bend up to 90 degrees. Well, look, that's exactly the distance we need. Once we're in, it's a simple case. Turn the vice up. A simple case, he says. Boom, bitch. That's not even the right fucking part. Dude, there's no holes in that. That's that's a duff. Now that I know exactly where the bend line is, which has not disappeared on the correct part, so we're actually doing the thing. Put it on top down like so on the bend line, yeah. Yeah. Aim the big chisel, the nasty thing, to him against the bend line. Yes, that works a lot better. Hot damn, that's a bracket. It is not awful. How many of these have I got to produce for this f***ing car? Just 19 more. Okay, it's now day two. Uh, somebody's went and had a tantrum. And I have went and had a think about what my friendship with this man means. I'm not going to make him do that. We're maybe going to uh, splash out. I've had a bit of a financial decision with this. Now, I'm going to run through, Christ knows how many grinder discs, Christ knows how much steel we wastage, drill bits, blah, 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 blah. For £30 on eBay, laser cut, mass produced, accurate for every single one. So, uh, this is better, yes. As much fun as it would be making countless many of these, and to be honest, even this one didn't turn out Particularly brilliant, it's going to need cleaning up and a bit more bending and a bit more cutting and Tommy's probably going to throw it in the bin when I'm not here to make new ones No, no, definitely For the sake of this man's sanity and my faith in what I'm, what I'm doing here being accurate It's not added a lot to the budget of the car, 30 quid, I mean If it happens, it's, I mean, you, you add the, the hours that it would take to cut it, the, the problems when it goes wrong The cost of the steel, the cost of the grinder discs, I mean And it even came wrapped in yesterday's sun, which is good what we now then have is a whole load of these brackets. What we now need to do is work out how to set brackets get onto said car. This is again not covered in the books, not covered in anything else, but what we're going to do is assemble all the parts we're going to need to make wishbones. This is a polyurethane bush. I'm pleased to announce that they will fit in this bracket. Lovely. 20 of these, how do you put them on at the car? Well, the book does actually give us some triangulation points, i.e. where they need to sit roughly on the chassis. However, there are ways that we can make this a bit more accurate than just lining one up at a time, welding it on, and for the best. For such a feat, I have come up with this. A jig! So this is 12mm threaded rod, and as you can see, I've put a nut on both ends, for where each one needs to be, and I have measured the distance apart that these will need to sit at when they're on the car. I've also orientated these to where they need to sit on the chassis as well. And that gives me something that looks like this. I'd like to think this needs little to no explanation, but I'm going to give it anyway. So, that bracket needs to weld on at an angle to the front here, and this one welds flat. The good thing about this guy welding flat is that it's a very easy pickup point. So I'm going to start with this one and use it with the rod to pick up this one correctly. So, first thing you want to do with the spirit level, make sure that's perfectly flat, and I've done that already. Then, before we weld it in, we'll need to measure from the centre lines out to each point of that threaded bar, and make sure they all match. If that's the case, that's straight as a die, and we're good to weld. But 
sorting out the standoffs, I have G-clamped a big steel plate onto the front. And that has done very well for making sure that the front of these are perfectly gapped, which gave us the whole gap for this. We're going to use the same process on the top. And as you can see, I've roughly G-clamped in this one. And we're going to just get this one aligned and see where it sits. Because that's what the books do. They tell you what the measurements are to be and where the things are to go. They don't explain how to actually get the parts correctly in and measured up. So, datum points, mate. That's what it's all about. So we're going to datum everything in this car from the front lower panel and just protect it all back. So having lined up the top using one of the new brackets and then <coughs> putting the mechanical hold door bracket on that we did from the big bible of bollocks there seems to be a bit of a mismatch so in the small print you will see it says showing details for shortened brackets please know that only the two front upper brackets are shortened now i thought that would just be the two front upper brackets but there's no way that's correct it's going to be the two on each side because that just doesn't work so so as a result what i thought we were get away with not having to do any more of we're gonna to have to do four more of because these top brackets will need to be shorter so in the next episode i'm going to make these four brackets and mechanical holder is going to actually start doing some stuff that's more relatable to your skill set yes cleaning things <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, everyone who's Patreon, thanks uh, for all the support, everyone who's not, mate, sort it, sort it out. Go for all, we got sell. What am I doing wrong? Put more goodies in. I've gave these cups, come on you guys, look, you get one of these free regardless of how long you stay for, please do. Um, Why not, if you stay for six months, we'll get our prison pouches out. If you don't stay for more than six months, we can't play some bad design. Aye, go with that, fine. Right, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Adios. Nobody said it was easy. Yep. You're literally in my filming space. Yep. <sighs> yep. Welcome back to Tools and Track. In this episode, we're going to open the doors and let the vape out. <laughs> Who was that? Um, so yeah, we're going to make these lines. What are the lines called? Intersexes. <laughs> Welcome back to Tools and Track. In this episode, I make this look more like a car. As a mother of three, the Duchess of Cambridge. Yeah, as a natural rapport with toddlers. Wow, that's a bit Jimmy Sandler. I wonder if it's going to end up Prince Andrew. Oh. I get nervous when you're behind me. You should do.